Hey everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and welcome to the You Asked For It section of Hockey Development Magazine. This is a, a truly interactive magazine and this is a section where we answer user questions. So these are questions that have come in um, through the magazine itself uh, and also through emails and different things like that. Um, today I wanted to respond to a note that I received from Jess and I apologize, I don't know where Jess is from, um, but uh, this is the note that, uh, that Jess wrote and he says, Hey Jeremy, thanks for the content in this mag. I've become a better player because of it this year and was even voted most improved player on my team. So that's fantastic. Congratulations, Jess. Let's keep going here. Uh, I'm 42 and after taking 17 years off from playing and you've inspired me to keep learning. So thanks. And then here, here we go with the questions. Two questions. One, suggestions for a five minute men's league warm up that plays just once a week with no practices. And the second one is suggestions for forwards in front of the goalie and best techniques for tipping pucks into the net. Uh, and then he says, thanks. So I think those are two great questions. So let's start with the first one. Um, suggestions for a men's league five minute warm up. Uh, okay, so first and foremost, generally speaking, men's league, at least the men's leagues that I've ever played in, there's like no structure for the warm up. Everybody just kind of does their own thing. There's also no coaches. So it's kind of hard, like even if one player wants to get an organized uh, warm up going. A lot of times it's just not going to happen. Um, so unless the whole team's on the board, you on on the same page as you, you might have a hard time getting any of the, any of this implemented. Um, but what I wanted to do is kind of show you a few examples of warm up drills that I've that I've seen and used. Um, you know, not necessarily in men's league, but in more serious hockey than that. Uh, and then you can kind of take it, pick and choose, and uh, figure out what you want to do um, using five minutes worth of this kind of material. So let's go ahead, we'll pull up the rink and I wanna diagram out a couple things we got going on. Um, so you can see, this is usually like for more, uh, I guess, I don't want you to more serious play, um, serious competition hockey, especially at the older age groups, you know, we're talking junior uh, or college, you're gonna have like 15 to 20 minutes for your warm up. So there, that's tons of time to get lots of good stuff in. And so these are a few of the drills that uh, you know that I've used and seen done um, at that level of play. And there's probably more than this, but you know we don't want to make this too long. So um, the first one is you've got some stations. So you can see we've got the forwards. Uh, we've divided the forwards into two, and so they've got uh, you know one station doing circle passing. So these are like tight, compact passes. Get it going either way. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do this. Sometimes you do the stationary where the, the players are just passing around from one guy to the next. Um, there's also a great version of this where uh, you skip a man, pass across, and then follow your pass. So then this player skips a man, passes across, and follows his pass. And then uh, obviously he'd be passing to this guy because this guy has, has moved, he's followed his pass. So it goes like that. You skip a man, you go clockwise, and then counterclockwise. And uh, you know you can get it, it, it's fast. It gets you a good warm up. Um, I guess probably one thing I should say before I dive straight into uh, the drills itself, themselves is the idea for the warm up. The warm up is a tricky thing in hockey because uh, physiologically to be warmed up means um, you know the best way to tell if you're warmed up is if you've broken a sweat. And uh, that's kind of they call that kind of the field measurement where um, your muscles are are pretty much ready to go by the time you're warm enough to have broken a sweat. So warm-ups in hockey are a little bit tricky because, um, you know, in, in any other sport, you do your, your warm-up prior to coming on to the, to the competition. So prior to coming onto the field or prior to coming on to the, to the tennis court or whatever. Um, in hockey, it's a lot more difficult because you have to get dressed. You have to get changed in your gear. So a lot of teams that do these, you know, elaborate pregame warm-ups and they get really nice and really stretched out. They break a good sweat and then they go in the locker room to get dressed and they're sitting in their gear for you know for a half hour, sitting in the locker room for a half hour, getting dressed. Um, and by that time, they've cooled off again. Um, so I've also seen players or teams that do warm-ups after they've gotten dressed in their full gear. And to me, that's that's uncomfortable. I don't like it as much, and that's probably a personal opinion. Uh, you may or may not care, but when I'm jumping around and running around in full gear, it, it all starts slipping, and, and it doesn't feel right when I by the time I get on the ice. So, uh, sorry, that's, a, I guess, kind of some personal note from, from my end. So my preference is to get out and have a really, you know, jump straight into a really high-tempo, quick-paced warm-up. Um, so 
like I said, so some of these may or may not, this, this is, these are drills that I've used in, in the longer style warm so there is more time to get your blood moving. So you may or may not wanna pick some of these, but let's get, jump back into what we were talking about before. So we've got this, the forwards doing some, some quick circle passing. If you wanna get that, uh, that heart rate up and break that sweat, then I would recommend doing the version of the circle passing where they're skating. So pass, follow your pass, skip a man, follow, skip a man pass, and then follow your pass and make it go fast. Um, same thing over here on the other circle. Uh, I've also seen teams where they break it off into you know two or three forwards and they do smaller groups than this to just get a small space of the ice. You can do that too. And then usually we have one forward that uh, is working with the goalie. So with this, you know, especially in men's league, generally speaking, men's league is a little bit hit or miss on, on skill level. So you want to have a forward that's fairly experienced that can shoot where the goalie needs it. Um, so you know, if the goalie wants to be going side to side, you want a player that can control his shot, uh, keep him low or keep him high or wherever the goalie wants. And goalies are usually pretty particular. So just I recommend asking the goalie, hey, where do you want me to shoot? And then he'll tell you, um, you know, what areas he likes what he wants to do or you know whether he wants to be sliding side to side or whatever so you can go take that for what it's worth uh out in the kind of the blue line neutral zone area uh usually the d pair off and they're doing short passes but what i like to do with these d is uh they're going you know they can start short passes back and forth but then what we do is we get them in motion so the one for the one defenseman skating forward and the other defenseman will be skating backwards while they're making the passes so it uh, gets the defenseman, you know, kind of warmed up in the fact of, of uh, you know, giving and receiving passes while in motion, while skating forwards, while skating backwards. Hockey's not only, a, I mean, most sports are like this, but hockey's not just about getting physiologically warm. It's not just about warming up your muscles. Um, it's also about, you know, getting the rust off or, or, you know, getting your hands warmed up so that you can control the puck well and not be choppy, um, getting your passing warmed up, stuff like that. So I like this kind of mentality for the D. Um, they start start close, and then as the warm up progresses, they can get further and further. Uh, and then I like to, as a defenseman, um, you know, if I'm playing D that game, I like to get to the point where I'm, I'm, you know, throwing saucer passes across ice, stuff like that, where I'm getting more of an, a, a game like uh, distance, where you know, like for example, on a regroup, you're going to be it's a it's a, a longer pass up ice on a regroup by the time you're moving it up to the forwards. So that's what I like to do with the D there. So if you want to, in a men's league scenario, I'd say maybe take like one or two minutes on this. And again, you're gonna to have to be very organized to not waste time on that. After that, I like to break into your standard horseshoe. And this just kind of gets your passing in motion. So this is the, the for initial drills were passing standing still. Now we're gonna get into passing in motion. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's not just warming up the muscles, but it's, it's getting your timing down and stuff like that as well. This is probably your most standard drill you've ever seen in a warm up. So I'm sure you've seen this one before, but we'll go ahead and do it. Um, just in case, so we'll throw some pucks down in there as well. This is a simple warm-up drill. So you're going to come out, uh, loop around the dot, so you're coming back towards the other line. You pick up a pass from the other line and walk it in for a shot. Like I said, very straightforward. And then uh, as soon as the player makes the pass, then he or she is going from the other side and the pass is uh, it's perpetual. So. That's your standard horseshoe, um, but the couple of things I like to do is again as a as a player I like to be you know experimenting with different types of passes, maybe throw some saucer passes out there, get warmed up on uh, you know on your hands and on your receiving and your giving passes and stuff like that. After that, what I do is uh, you know a couple minutes of that and then I'll pull out the defenseman and have them start right here, right next to one of the one of the forward lines, and now the the defensemen are going to be the ones that have the pucks. Okay, and then it's going to be essentially the same drill, except now we're going to be running it as a two-on-one. Okay, so the forwards will leave. Let's just say uh, we're going this way. Okay, and generally I like to have the pass coming to the close side, not cross ice, because as you get other players moving through the drill, you're going to be passing through the other line as they're coming to shoot, or the other players as they're coming to shoot. So that's just kind of a small detail, but um, one that I like to consider. Both forwards are gonna leave at the same time, okay? And uh, we're gonna have the pass come out from the defenseman. Pretty straightforward. And then generally, I like to have this forward take a couple strides with the puck and then fire cross ice pass. Again, this is just getting us used to the various types of passes, the timing, you know, making sure everything's kind of nailed down for the game. After that, both forwards will swing outside the blue line like this. 
and usually you're going to have some sort of a, uh, I would say, uh, you know, some sort of a uh, neutral zone cross ice pass as well. So they may give and receive right here in the neutral zone, but they're going to crisscross in the neutral zone. So let's just say we do make that pass. And uh, so this pass comes across, boom, and then these guys are just crisscrossing and entering the zone at the same time. And they want to make sure they enter the zone onside. Okay, so don't get caught up and, and uh, you know, don't get sloppy, I should say, and uh, come in off sides. You know, time it out, make sure you're coming in properly. The defenseman, he's uh, just going to close the gap. So come out, close the gap, and uh, I should draw like that. Close the gap, and then he backs up to play that one on one. And, uh, you know, again, this is a good drill to get the defenseman in the one on one mode. Good drill for the forwards to work on their passing. It's, it's, uh, it's light resistance, but it's still, you know, a game like scenario that you'll see, um, you know, situations like this in a game all the time. So that's kind of the second drill, uh, or the third drill, I guess I should say. After we do a few of these, then what I like to do is uh, pull out into the neutral zone. And let's just see, I'll make sure I don't, don't delete some of this stuff. Okay, so then what we'll do in the neutral zone is we'll do like a breakout regroup attack drill. So what we do is we throw our defensemen. Our defensemen kind of start down here, and then we have forwards out in the middle. Okay, so it'll be like the, uh, the lineup of centermen here, lineup of wingers over here. I'm just using Fs for forwards and the lineup of uh, the other left wingers over here. So uh, the centermen will take the pucks and they'll dump the puck in. So puck goes into the corner and then basically the defensemen go pick it up. They can go D to D, they can do a misdirection. I like the defensemen to work through uh, various different options. So don't just do the same thing every time. Um, you know, maybe one defense will skate it from one side to the other. Whatever whatever they want to do, but they need to get get used to, get warmed up on, uh, on all their different options that they'll use in a game. So let's just say the defenseman goes in. Defenseman will go in, go in, go in, go in, puck. And uh, let's just say he goes D to D. Okay. So we're going to kind of save on some of these lines here and just go straight to the diagram itself. Okay. And then we've got our forward swinging in. And, uh, and then our defenseman, or sorry, our centerman, after, after dumping it in, then he's shadowing the puck just like he would in a regular game breakout. So he shadows the puck. If it goes D to D, now he's swinging through. So now that we've got a center option and a board side option, and uh, they can break out. The other winger is coming down, watching. If it doesn't come out his side, then he's giving an option as a, as a breakaway man. Now, obviously, we don't have the full neutral ice to play with here, but he'll simulate you know, where, where that would actually be in a game situation. So let's just say it goes something like this. Pass comes out to the, to the winger. Little touch pass to the center coming through. And then uh, the centerman will be able to swing through, pick it up, and hit this forward as he's simulating that breakaway man. Right? All three players will swing out, outside the blue line. The defenseman will come out, close the gap, and then the forwards will enter in onside, playing a three on two against the defenseman. Um, once the shot's on net, do I, I usually say like one shot, one rebound, and then get out of the way, let the next line go. So you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time messing around down here and making it so that the rest of the group is just standing there waiting. So uh, yeah, so those are kind of the uh, the main main warm up drills that I like. And then when there's about you know 30 seconds left or or, or a minute left, um, you know depending on which drills you use. But then uh, then usually the goalies get out of the net. And they're kind of doing their last stretches or whatever they do. You know, goalies are always doing their own thing. Uh, so usually the goalies get out of the net, and then the forwards will just, you know, take a couple butterflies and, and uh, shoot the pucks in the net, maybe work on a couple bar downs, just stuff like that. And that's it. So that is a typical warm-up of, you know, something that I would use in a game situation. Uh, again, I use this basically, you know, in situations where we have a lot of time. You're not going to have that much time in the men's league game, obviously. And then the other question is, are your teammates going to be on board with a structured warm-up, or do they just want to do their own thing? You know, it is men's league, and, uh, you know, different teams have different mindsets as far as that goes. But hopefully that helps, and you can pick and choose any of those drills that, uh, that might work for you. Now, let's go ahead and uh, switch gears here. I'm going to assume, let's, let's switch gears and assume that this is the other team's net. So this is your offensive zone now. In fact, let's change the color of the goalie just so that, that maybe that's, uh, that'll help us be not as confused here. We'll go like this. Throw down a blue goalie so we can remember that this is not our team anymore. OK? 
Okay, so we're talking about deflections. Now deflections, there's there's a number of different aspects of deflections and, and net front play in general. Um, first and foremost, to, to execute a proper deflection or tip, you've got to be able to uh, you know have good hand-eye coordination, be able to actually perform the move in and of itself. And personally, I don't think that there's anything too tricky or special about that. All it is is just a question of practice. So you know, get a defenseman out the blue line, stand in front of the net, and uh, just start tipping pucks in. Um, you know, defenseman, we want to have a good a good tippable puck. You know, we want to have it be um, you know, low, you know, waist high or lower, those are typical, you know, anything above that is, is not going to work as well. you you run the risk of getting called high stick anyways. So you want a good typical puck and then, uh, you know, work on the different types of tip uh, of tip ins. There's, there's the shot pass where it's more of a redirection, almost, uh, you know, the, the defenseman's just firing a low hard pass on the ice to you and then you're redirecting it in. And then there's the actual tips or deflections where you're standing in front of the shot and, uh, you know, the shot's coming in waist high, you're knocking it down. Or if it's coming in down on the ice, you're tipping it up. So different things like that. So that's the first part. Just nail down the physical aspects of, of the tips and deflections. Um, but once you've got that down, you have a relatively decent hand-eye coordination on that. Then it becomes a question of, of uh, positioning and timing, getting to the net at the proper place, proper time to be able to uh, you know achieve what you're looking to do. So there are a couple different schools of thought on the tip-ins and uh, you know it'll depend really you know if if this is like a a competitive team it'll depend on what your coach wants. If this is a men's league then just experiment it with it and figure out what's going to work the best um, depending on your style of play and what you're looking to do. So let me dump, jump into the uh, the two types of of uh, kind of the two schools of thought on this. First one is to put the guy as close to the goalie as possible. So basically you're right on, your heels are on the edge of that crease and you're standing, you're basically, because the goalie wants to come out, right? And so, you know, to cut off the angle and let's let's actually draw our defenseman out here as well so we can know, have kind of a frame of reference. Let's just say we've got a defenseman out of the point and defenseman out on this side. We've got a couple forwards, uh, you know, let's say we've got a typical setup where we've got a forward in the corner with a puck and maybe someone in a support position on the hash marks. Let's just say that's what we've got. And uh, let's just say the pass comes out from the corner to the D, and it's gone D to D, and now this guy's about to shoot. Okay, so you want it first and foremost, no matter which which school of thought you take, you want to be directly in front of the shot. Okay, um, some players are scared of this, and they don't. You know, this, for my opinion, um, if you're going to be actually deflecting or tipping the puck in, then you want to be between straight between the puck. And the goalie okay so you want to be right in a direct path that's going to allow you to screen like we said this is the first mentality where your your heels are on the crease you're in the goalie's face and uh, basically it's a screen you're setting up the screen um, we'll talk about a little bit of this as we go but uh, if, if you're not already in front of the net then there's that's that's where the option for the shot pass comes so let's say this guy's coming out from the corner and let's say maybe this defenseman's over a little bit further okay so the pass comes over, and now there's a little bit of an angle here, and he can throw a shot pass down onto your stick, and then you redirect it into the net. So it looks something like that as you're on the way to the net. That's the only time really that it's gonna make sense for you not to be in front of the goalie. It's just if you're already in motion, you're not quite in front of the goalie yet. But if we're talking, generally speaking, we're talking a, a tip in, um, and we're talking this first school of thought where you're right on top of the goalie, boom. You're gonna be on top of the goalie, directly in between the goalie and the shooter, okay? And uh, our objective is to screen the goalie, mess with him, make it obnoxious for him to be there, okay? And when I say mess with him, I don't mean anything illegal, I just mean, you know, be be an obstruction to his vision. Um, so the the positive points of this are, it makes the goalie, makes it harder for the goalie to see see the shot coming in and play the, play, uh, play the puck. The weaknesses of this, or the, the drawbacks, is a lot of times um, there's two drawbacks actually. If you don't tip it, but the goalie makes the save, most of the time the rebound is going to bounce past you, so it's going to come out um, somewhere you know into this area, out kind of in the middle. And so now even if you do jump on the rebound, you're having to go out to it, turn around, and then try to fire a shot on net, which is not as effective. The other the other drawback of this is if you do tip it there's not as much room between you and the goalie for the puck to change directions. That might be hard to kind of visualize just from a whiteboard here, but 
Um, you know, we want to give, you know, the more, the more that the puck can change directions, the more chance you're going to have of the puck going in uh, because it changes the angle of where the goalie, you know, was expecting the puck to come in. <clears throat> so, for example, if, if the puck comes in waist high and I tip it and it's going down, it might get down to the middle of my thigh. You know, it, it starts at my waist, gets down maybe six or seven inches, uh, and then, you know, the goalie's got it. It's not as drastic of a change of direction as it would be if I were, you know, six to eight feet out. And now I change direction, you know, I, it's going from, uh, you know, it's it's bouncing from the from the waist high and I tip it and now it's flat along the ice, right? Um, so that's kind of your drawback there. What I recommend, well, and, and you know, like I said, this is kind of going to be a personal preference thing. I like to pull out a little bit, you know, maybe six or eight feet out, okay? So now you're out here. And uh, like I just explained, as the puck comes in, if you don't tip it, but there's a rebound, you're on your way into the in towards the puck for the rebound. It's a it's a more favorable rebound positioning. Um, or if you do tip it, then there's a lot more space between you and the goalie for that puck to change directions. So, for me personally speaking, that's what I like to see. Optimally, is you'll have kind of scenarios where where both can happen. Is where you've got you know more than one guy in front of the net, so you've got one low and one high. Um, you know, for example, let's just say the puck comes out, um, you know, let's just say we were, we were running out of the corner. This guy broke through, um, but the, the give and go out of the corner wasn't there, but it pulled a man with him. And now the puck comes out to the point. Well, now we should have, we do have two guys in front. And then hopefully once this guy sees that the defenseman's winding up for a shot, he's pulling out to the side. And, you know, depending on where these guys all shake out there, hopefully we have a, a conversion on the net. Uh, or convergence on the net where all three guys are converging on the net and and are able to uh, you know to cause some havoc there the the most frustrating thing is when you're getting chances and you're not getting your stick on the rebounds and um, you know that's all it's all about timing and arriving at the net and positioning in front of the net if you're too low the rebounds bounce past you if you're too high then you're too slow getting the rebound so it's all a question of timing and positioning and how you get there and really that's only something that can be that can be learned and it, it tends to vary from team to team um, you know, if you've got defensemen that get quick, hard shots off, then the timing will be different than if you've got defensemen that, that can't shoot without a huge windup and takes them forever to get the puck on net. And then, you know, by that time, there's guys already there uh, to defend against you. So, um, you know, it's just something you'll have to mess with. But that's the general philosophy and the kind of the couple of strategies and schools of thought behind that, that principle. So, um, Jess, hopefully that helps. And uh, hopefully you've got a couple of drills now you can use as your warm-ups and, uh, and also maybe uh, pop a couple goals off tips and rebounds in front. So good luck this year. And if you want to submit your own question, um, you know, just pick up HD Mag. It's in the App Store. It's, in, it's in, uh, on iOS as well as Android. Pick it up. And uh, if you're already watching this within the magazine, then that's perfect. Just flip over to the page where you can submit your question and uh, go ahead and submit. So that's it for this one, and we'll see you again next time.